I would fight all of them. Easy fight. Oh, he's doing the old Dennis was just talking to get a fight. <laughs> But Logan Paul and Dylan Danis fight was the dumpster fire that I said it would be. A few of you guys DM'd me and said, Steve, are you gonna do a reaction to the post-fight situation with the fight? I said, what fight? What fight? Dylan Danis walked forward like this. Logan Paul was swinging loaded punches from his hip. There's no fight to even talk about, but there is a bit of drama percolating underneath this whole situation. And my question is really simple. Are these guys gonna have a rematch in MMA? Well, Logan Paul is gonna break it down for us. Let's take a look at it. When a fighter... <laughs> When a fighter, Dylan, <laughs> enters the, the the bout trying to survive and not fight, it, it's, it's going to change the, the dynamic. Like, you just have your hands up the whole time. He just is avoiding the headshot. Let me break this down. I said I wouldn't, so I'm going back on my word. But when you're a fighter and you go forward with a high guard and your opponent is lobbing shots at you, but your objective is to fight off the front foot, when you take a whole step back like Dylan was doing, Dylan was taking whole steps back. He was jumping back out of range and then smiling. You're giving up real estate you're stifling your own momentum in the fight what you got to do when you walk in with a high guard is pick the shots off read the shots and continue to steal the momentum and the real estate in the fight so dylan just from a technical standpoint it's not enough to just hold your hands up bounce in and out of range so my question to that is we saw you wall bag him a couple times which is you know what we've always hoped and prayed for because you do that drill and training the entire time but what was your fear in really staying in the pocket when you knew that he wasn't throwing shots like really staying deep in the pocket was it the eye or what was preventing you from staying where you needed to be to get that knockout because yeah. there's a lot of people talking about it today the fact that you survived the fact that you won the fight which you did in in in, in pretty respectable fashion but weren't able to get the knockout mike the thin microphone stand is fine what are you fiddling with stop with the left arm it's something yeah. that some people were talking about i'll be honest i was disappointed it was my first thought when the fight ended i really wanted to knock this guy out but me and you were talking about it the way it ended might have been the best outcome no justifications it was a horrible outcome in fact there are people that illegally stream this fight that feel like they got ripped off you couldn't have paid me enough money to watch the fight no one won it was a lose lose because my ego would have been like yeah i knocked him out but we got to see dylan expose himself for the clown and disgrace the combat sports that he is he shot himself in the foot bro bro you, you're not even good at the thing you said you're good at he tried to do a guillotine choke on me he pulled guard he tried to take me down in a boxing uh -huh. match yeah and failed miserably no you didn't fail it, you you stuffed it i get to talk about this mike you're rubbing me the wrong way you've never fought in your life by the way mike here's the thing did dylan fail on that double leg attempt the head inside shot he did was logan slippery yes is it difficult to land a double leg in the open when you have boxing gloves on absolutely do i think logan's still a better wrestler sure i do but the point of the matter is it is hard to take a guy down when he's slippery with boxing gloves when he has a wrestling background so everyone relax the guillotine was a bit embarrassing <laughs> if i'm to be honest the guillotine he pulled guard he didn't have the wrist high enough he didn't have it cinched in head positioning was off relative to the guillotine obviously you're dealing with a guy with a sweaty head syndrome and he lost the guillotine a, a little embarrassing how, Bro, embarrassing? how embarrassing a guillotine and even got a ground and pound on. <laughs> <laughs> Did Did him? Him? like like on he's he's ass. asking for an mma fight with you and I'm watching this now and after running the tape back I'll beat his, I'll do, beat you, his do you do it he threw more punches at Neil than he did at you. <laughs> he threw more punches at <laughs> my security guard, yeah. Dylan missed a shot at a security guard. The security did an old school pullback. Dylan was like, well... So this is the question we want to know. Is Logan Paul going to take a rematch with Dylan in MMA? And now the argument is, well, he failed on a takedown. He failed on a guillotine. You landed a ground and pound strike on him, so he'll, you'll beat him in a fight. I think Logan understands the difference between an MMA fight where you're getting your calves kicked, you're getting oblique kicked, the gloves are smaller, it's easier to tie your hands together and actually grapple. It's completely different world the distance and range is completely different too so you're not going to stand there in boxing range when the risk of getting kicked is at play and getting taken down of course let's hear what he has to say do you take an mma fight with no him? no you know you know why i said i would if he gave me his, his whole purse which is not going to happen obviously he's giving that to nina <laughs> he doesn't deserve the platform we, we we saw we saw the kind of person he is i walked into the arena to booze i left to cheers no one likes that dirty fight shit bro you came to box like respect the sport respect me as an opponent back up your words are you a man well, you can't talk that much shit for three months you can't try to ruin someone's life and then come in there with that kind of performance so to answer the question the fight is not happening and if you watch back at my lead-up videos to this matchup you'll see that i clearly said the mma fight is never going to happen i also said if you go back and watch the tape this fight is not going to be good it's not going to be worth the price of admission but we're going to watch it anyway because we want to see how the drama unfolds this 
the performance that we saw from Dylan. We're talking about the failed double leg. We're talking about the failed guillotine. We're talking about the fact that he couldn't even land a punch on the security guard, for God's sakes. He's still going after Nina, though. Check this out. What a night. He's playing into the fact that he pulled guard and opened up his legs, saying, you know, I thought that that was just a little bit of a corny move, too. I guess he's trying to say, come on, just come to the ground with me. Everyone's like, yeah, he was making fun of Nina. I don't think that was what he was doing. I think he was just trying to say, you can't hurt me with the punches. Let's fight like a real man. He didn't come prepared. What did I say in my previous video? He doesn't have a boxing coach. There were a few of you guys who commented and said, well, not everyone needs a, a boxing coach or a coach to win fights. It's like, you need a boxing coach when you're not a boxer and you need to develop your skill set for a fight. And he was just ill prepared on every level. And that's why I'm not getting into the subtleties of what, how the fight broke down and where the punches were coming from, where the fight could have been won and lost. I'm not even going to give it that amount of credit to be completely honest with you. Dylan managed to land one good punch and now he's like posting it all over the place. Look at this. That's it. That's all he had. That one shot. And he posted like, you know, I'm doing work with that lead overhand. A jujitsu guy with no boxing camp or coach made his debut. Never wobbled, never dropped, had no standing eight count and rocked you multiple times. If I were Nina, I'd call off the wedding. You achieve nothing in your own sport. MMA next. As we now know, MMA is not going to happen. As we suspected, it's not going to happen. But the truth is, if we analyze this closely, it seems like Dylan Dennis, that redemption arc we were talking about leading up to the fight has now been scorched. Everyone's turning on him. He's effectively lost the internet, which is a great leveraging tool if we're talking about support. We want support. We want people to buy our products. We want people to watch and engage us in a positive way. If possible, it seems like that's not happening. You know, people just getting at them getting at him. Dennis on the internet. Dennis in the ring. I told you. Dennis was just talking to get a fight to build up the pay-per-view buys, which he did a phenomenal job at. Some of you guys actually thought he was going to do work in the ring. Like, Let's look at some of the things he said versus what actually played out. I know I'm going to knock him out. I don't think he's ready for what I bring. Like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. You are an easy fight. He's taking his stall. There you go. And you think you're gonna win? Yes. It's like a bad seventh grade basketball score. Okay, so you think you're knocking Logan out? Of course, I'm gonna kill him, bro. Dennis just can't even touch Paul, really. Right there, swing and miss again. And if you beat Logan, right? Not if. When? You could tell he didn't believe that when he said it, you know what I'm saying? You know what's weird about boxing? It's so easy that you feel like you're not doing anything. I don't think he forgives Dylan Dennis anymore. I don't he think so in the call. The Zen moment has gone. You know, he's not he's not a real fighter. I've never seen a fall from grace be so overnight. This guy had it all. Dylan was on top of the world. But unfortunately, when you build your brand and you build your awareness on negativity, that's exactly what happens. All those same people that pretended to love you didn't actually love you. They just hated Logan. So as soon as you f up or you don't back up your word with true behavior, everyone that supposedly loved you, again, they just hated Logan, are going to invert and turn on you. And that's exactly what you're seeing. You're seeing a situation that, you know, for all the creators out there or future influence fighters, influencer, boxers, build. Build your empire on honey, not on vinegar. It's the best way to do it. If there's a rare one-off situation where you hate a guy, sure, do what you got to do. But if you're going to build your entire brand off of negativity, don't be mad when the universe reflects that same thing on you. Now, as Dylan attempts to hopefully replenish some of his lost stardom that he's experiencing at the moment, he went on Pierce Morgan. Now, I have my opinions on Pierce Morgan. I think he's a little bit of a flip-flopper and whatever. But I thought this was a really funny clip where he pretty much just on uh, Dylan the entire time. Get in there and like trade, he would run away, you know? He you landed scared. nine punches in six rounds. Yeah. How is that possible? Because he was running though. Ian McConnor was saying it. He, he was running, he I mean, would he go. threw more fights at the end with the security guy. He missed that punch on the security guard, actually. Yeah. I was a handicap the whole time. He's still beat. Yeah. As I said, if you're holding your hands up like this and you're trying to steal real estate and every time your opponent punches you, you take a step back, you're effectively giving up time without actually getting what you want. There's no ROI because you're giving up the real estate you're trying to steal. And when you don't have a boxing coach, you don't got the proper sparring, the timing on your shots is well off. So every time you swing, he's on the exit. You're missing every shot because you don't have that timing earned through sparring. So there's just no way to really give him any kind of credit for that fight. But of course, Logan, not that he's complimenting himself. I, I think he's been pretty docile in terms of giving himself any kind of credit. He didn't do anything. Big loaded up arms, swinging from odd angles, missing most of the shots he threw. He did miss. I mean, he was hitting a lot of glove in Dylan's defense, but it's hard to land a clean shot on a guy who's not exchanging with you. 
If I throw a punch at you right now, the same reward that I get for trying to land a punch is the same risk I take for getting countered on that exit. So that's the beauty of fighting, right? There's a risk reward ratio that we all tune in to see. If I go out there and I don't throw punches, I can survive against a lot of guys. But as soon as you start extending yourself to try to get yours, that's when the risk starts to take effect. Leave a comment below if you think Dylan Dennis could beat Logan in an MMA fight. I know a lot of you guys are going to say that he can't because he failed on a few takedowns. But really sit there and think about it. I explained to you how the ranges are different. The glove size is different. Obviously, the preparation would be different. I'd be curious to know what your opinion is. Leave a comment below. Let me just clarify something real quick. The next grift for Dylan Dennis is to try to get into the UFC. He's been tagging Dana White. I'm ready to fight, Dana White. Let's do this. Your fighting career. Just let it go, bro. It's over. He is the keyboard champion, bro. He's a keyboard champion. Now he wants to fight in the UFC. We're not going to take away anything from Dylan. We know that he's a good, effective, essentially jujitsu guy. That's the truth. But he just doesn't have the stand up or the discipline more than the stand up because he's durable enough, right? He's durable enough. It's just that he doesn't have the discipline and the respect to actually show up prepared. We know he's trying to get into the UFC. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. In the UFC, for example, yeah. what type of fighter would you least want to come up against? All of them. Any one of them. I would fight all of them. I would fight John Jones. I'm not scared. I did a lot of detector tests. Think you could beat him? I, I did a lot of detector tests and it showed that I, you know, I believe that. And I think if you're a fighter and you don't believe that, mm. then you're not a real fighter. Well, I agree with that. Just like you guys should agree with liking this video. Put me in the UFC and give me Islam first. Time. He said, give me Islam. These are guys that can stand, fight in the clinch, fight basically in every single position at the highest level and can push a pace for 25 minutes. Dylan, stop it. So Dylan Dennis made a pretty penny in the fight against Logan Paul, but how much of that's going to go to Nina? Who knows? It's been fun covering the fight. I think we've all had a good time in the comments section going over, you know, who's going to win the fight. I knew it was going to be a dumpster fire and it proved to be just that. Now he wants to get into the UFC. Don't be surprised if Dana White actually ends up signing this guy because the fact of the matter is he's a good promoter. He's not a bad fighter, but at that level, even outside of the top 15, I don't see Dylan Dan is doing very well. Now for the uninitiated, we have a free newsletter linked down below that's designed to help you with your habits, your discipline. And we have over 3,300 people that have joined over the last few months. And it's been incredible going back and forth with you guys. It's been a true gift of mine. It's really my favorite aspect of creating here online is connecting with you guys on that level. Because sometimes creating a video, it's like I put it out there, but it doesn't really have that reciprocal relationship. Getting you guys in the email is the best thing in my opinion. And also Dylan Dan is you want to be the opposite of Dylan Dennis. You want to have discipline, positive habits that get results. Check out the newsletter down below. Strangle Gang, as always, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next one.